What's up, everybody, and welcome back. Uh, we got a lot to talk about here over the, the holiday break, and hopefully you had a good holiday in 2019, uh, depending on when you're watching this, will be good to you. But we've got a lot to talk about because uh, some commentary came out about 240 frames per second with Anaconda, which is the higher-end next-gen Xbox console in the Scarlet family, and Twitter and everything else blew up saying, Brad, what does this mean? Is this accurate? And so let's just kind of dive in here. I, you know, no beating around the bush, as you'll see here in a second. In an interview with Gaming Bolt, a Wedbush securities analyst, Michael Proctor, Pactor, or however you pronounce his last name, uh, discussed the new Xbox family and touched a huge perf jump to the top tier models. He said, so I think there'll be a streaming device like in a $100 Xbox console that doesn't run in 4K or 240 frames per second. A couple things to unpack there. And then I think there'll be a more expensive console that supports 4K, 240 frames per second, virtual reality. And I don't know if there will be models. I don't think you're going to get completely different consoles. T tons of things that are going on there. One, no idea where he heard that there's going to be two different consoles or maybe a streaming box for around $100. Um, that's still up in the air. I need to do another video on kind of clarifying some of that stuff. But I, I don't disagree that you're going to have one version of the next kind of underlying base structure of the next generation console. And then if you pay more money, you're going to get more performance, but it's all going to be basically the underlying architecture is going to be the same, but you're going to get different features at different price points, meaning the two different price points. We have the arcade version that they call Scarlet Arcade, and then they also have the Scarlet Pro version, which is the high end, which he is saying 4K, 240 frames per second. You know, get out your sad trombone noise here for a second because 240 frames per second is not going to happen. It's not obtainable. It's, I shouldn't say it's not obtainable. It's not logical to go hunting for that type of performance. If you jump back in your time machine before the Xbox One launched, it was, hey, they're, lo they're targeting 1080p, 60 frames per second. Sure, if you use the word targeting, sure, they were targeting 4K, 60 frames per second with the Xbox One. It doesn't make sense, but sure, someone, I'm sure somebody said, hey, let's get that performance. Um, for this generation, it does not make sense. First off, we already have 4K gaming back here, which the Xbox One X does, but it is not at 60 frames per second. Hell, it's not even at 30 frames per second on some games, uh, notably PUBG. And... But 4K gaming is very expensive on the compute unit. And so let's just take a look at a little very poorly drawn uh, paint demographic or demographic artwork that I've created here. So on the left, we have frames per second. At the bottom, we have compute power. Now this is not the scale and not perfect. It's also done in Microsoft Paint. But what you have uh, over on the left side is 60 frames per second is in the blue, the blue little notch. And it's like, okay, so that's how you get to, that's the amount of compute power you need to get to 60 frames per second. To jump to 240 frames per second, it's not a linear uh, relationship here. You have to ex dramatically increase the compute power to get the 240 frames per second over 60. And here's the best part. It doesn't matter why you don't need 240 frames per second because the current Xbox supports FreeSync. The next one is going to support FreeSync 2, which means that when you have a TV back here, it is going to sync up to the frame rate and you're not even going to notice. So chasing down 240 frames per second isn't a logical use of compute power. And I would be willing to bet that even if Microsoft could hit 240 frames per second, they wouldn't because of the taxing overhead needed to actually get that frame rate could be used for other things to let, to run the underlying uh, Xbox OS to tie into Scarlet Cloud. It, it the benefit of return above 60 diminishes significantly. Now, granted, going from 30 or 15 to 60 or 30 to 60, massive performance improvement or for the user for the end user, meaning your gaming experience gets much better. Going from 60 to say 240, your gaming experience doesn't get exponentially better it, it, it drops off pretty quickly so granted i believe that they are targeting 4k 60 frames per second is the benchmark that they want to hit and that is still very difficult to do you need an expensive computer today uh go go spec out a pc today that does 4k 60 frames per second stable it's not cheap and granted if microsoft wants to build a console that's between four and five hundred dollars that is going to achieve 4k 60 they're going to need a lot of smart thinking from amd who's building their next gen cpu which has been a point of discussion from a lot of people wondering what the architecture is for the gpu and the cpu and so what i'm hearing is that I said Zen 2, I still believe that is accurate. I believe it's going to be coming after the Picasso uh, architecture. 
And I do believe it's going to be based on Navi-like GPU. Now, the reason why I say like uh, for both CPU and GPU is that Microsoft and every other company for building consoles, Sony included, whoever else, typically kind of does a custom Frankenstein-style chip because there's certain features of platforms that they don't need. And so they remove them to make it easier to process the chip, make it higher yield and everything else. And so... You can use those frame those architectures as frameworks, but I would not definitively say, at least not yet, because we're still not fully sure that that is the exact chip and framework that, or, or chips that they're, they're using. I believe it's going to be a derivative of them to make it into the console. Now, here's the exciting part about all this. And this one may not sound too exciting, but it's going to be awesome for console gamers. Microsoft is approaching this chip design so that it is enterprise friendly. And what I mean by that is Microsoft is building their Scarlet Cloud. We already know this. Currently, it's based on the Xbox One. I don't have my S around here. And then they're going to upgrade it to Scarlet. What they're going to be doing with that hardware when it's not in use by gamers is they're going to be selling it to the enterprise for GPU compute or similar compute for potentially the processor. What this means is that when the console's hardware is not being used, other customers can, can rent or lease through Azure the hardware. Why is this so important? This gives Microsoft another financial incentive to make that hardware as most powerful as possible. And not even just the Gen 1, but to keep it updated. Because if they can prove that their Scarlet Cloud is good for certain compute tasks in the cloud, then they are gonna keep investing more into that X Cloud architecture and infrastructure to make sure that it is always the best grade available for enterprise customers, which is gonna make it the best grade available for console gamers. This is, the, this is the key, and this is why I'm beginning to think that Sony is going to have a hard time competing technically with Microsoft from an infrastructure perspective. Now, Sony is very likely just taking all their money and buying up IP, which is a very smart move for consoles. We know Microsoft is doing the same thing, but I will be, I will be quite surprised if on a technical level, if Sony is able to outmaneuver Microsoft in this next generation, only because of what Microsoft is doing in the cloud. The important thing here is that Microsoft is exploring pathways to make console gaming an enterprise revenue generating entity. That is extremely important, you guys. Microsoft makes most of their money in the enterprise. If they can prove that console hardware makes money in the enterprise, not only are you going to have a kick-ass console, you're going to have enterprise-grade cloud infrastructure backing it, and it's only going to get better because Microsoft can then justify that expense through other customers buying and leasing that technology. That is, that is a massive, a massive advantage for Microsoft. And so keep all that in mind, but I don't think any of that equates to 240 frames per second because I don't think it's logical to build a box that is so overly powerful that it achieves that and just sacrifices everything else. I don't think that is their strategy. I think they're going for this massive, uh, in, in the enterprise world, it's called hybrid compute where you have local, uh, good local compute and extremely good local or uh, cloud compute. And then you blend those two together like we see in Crackdown 3. And I think that experience is only going to get better with the next generation hardware and as Microsoft explores all this stuff. This is a big, big, big investment for Microsoft. I'm really excited about how this is, is going to materialize. We still got a lot of time between now and release. You guys, we're talking at least 18 months, um, if not longer. And so keep that in mind that a lot of stuff hasn't changed. And if you hear developers saying, oh, we're being told to target 240 frames per second, I don't think that's accurate. Microsoft is very good about saying this is the baseline performance that you need to achieve for the console and everything else is up to you. We've seen this in PUBG, the latest PUBG update, I keep pointing the wrong thing, for um, the Xbox One X allows you to change the resolution to get improved frame rate. That is very much a Microsoft thing. They said, you got to achieve certain benchmarks and they're like, screw it. We're going to give the customer the option of higher frame rate or better resolution. They can choose. And we're going to see that going forward. And keep in mind, launch games on a console, which we can talk about in another video, they get a lot of exceptions because they're they're building on beta or even alpha hardware or alpha SDKs. And so that's why the first gen games are always a little rough. They haven't had time to optimize. They don't know the full hardware specs right up until pretty close to release from a, a development perspective. And so keep all this in mind, guys. 240 frames per second. Don't that that is that is misleading at best. Do not expect that. Do expect uh, FreeSync 2. Do expect Navi-based GPU. Um, it might be, again, might be some sort of derivative that Microsoft has come up with. And after Picasso, some sort of architecture for the AMD, uh, the CPU as well. And so I hope that clarifies things up a little bit. I've got some more stuff to do on this streaming stuff. And I'm starting to hear a couple of things about games, but nothing I'm ready to talk about yet. 
Have yourselves a wonderful day. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and we'll catch you back here next time.